Good afternoon, anyone. My name is Sayed Asher. I'm a tax executive here at Premier Brains. Uh, we uh, welcome you all to this webinar hosted by Premier Brains. So the main topic for discussion today is the amended VAT executive regulations. So now this is another interesting topic. Uh, most of us are uh, like an, this will imply to all our businesses and the ongoing business, all the transactions that will apply to this. So here's another interesting topic. Various concepts are covered. And it'll give you a brief introduction to Premier Brains. Yeah. So Premier Brains is another certified international business advisory firm. We are based in uh, Dubai Business Bay, and we have an international presence as well. And we've uh, covered over 12 to 14 years of experience uh, serving in this line of work. So this is an introduction to our UAE directors and partners all uh, very professional and qualified individuals handling various aspects and hoping to provide professional advice tailoring to your needs. Yeah. So for today, the top the speakers would be Rishi Chawla, our UAE managing partner, and uh, Piyush Papneja, our UAE tax manager. So and they will provide you a detailed understanding and guidance on the various aspects. They'll provide a clear explanation and uh, significant changes that are there in the new executive VAT regulations. And hopefully it will uh, uh, give a clear understanding and transparent uh, understanding of all the laws and uh, uh, all the new implications which will apply to your businesses. Okay, so now I hand over the screen uh, to my uh, managing partner Rishi Chawla, who will then take on and uh, uh, start the uh, webinar. Before right, that, I would like to. Before that, sorry, sir. Before that, I'd like to uh, note that the new amended VAT regulations they were published on second of October, twenty twenty four, and these uh, are mainly aimed to provide a clear and transparent uh, understanding of the uh, new articles and the new implications which will apply to your businesses, and these would come effective from November fifteenth, twenty twenty four. Now, yes, sir, you can take over this. Right. Thank you, Ashir. Thank you uh, for, for starting this session and welcome everyone to our webinar. Um, the, the purpose of this webinar is, is mainly to just touch, touch base upon the major changes that have happened. Um, so how we have structured it is that I will pick up some of the basic concepts which are there and the rest of the things will be handled by Piyush who handles all the indirect tax, tax related aspects in Premier Brains. So that's how it is. And just to start off uh, the session, let me tell you like the VAT got implemented from 2018, first January. And I was just looking at it, uh, how it how it all went through, like how many clarification and everything has happened. And I noted that there are about 170, um, you know, guidance guidance notes references of public clarification that were issued by fta so far so if you take it on month on month basis it's roughly between two to three you know every month uh, things are coming so it's very important basically the crux is it's very important to to keep reading and keep uh, following what all changes are happening uh, and and now i think the vat regulations have also changed that also means that there are some significant aspect which they wanted to cover through the through the executive regulation because ex executive regulation is one of the main document in the VAT law. So with that, I'll start this session. The, so the, the first uh, page basically talks about the new definitions that they've added. Um, the first one is the virtual assets. Actually, virtual assets uh, specifically was not mentioned in the law earlier, but however, they have covered that virtual assets in the law. So virtual assets, you know, all the cryptocurrency and so on, uh, and those kind of assets are now being recognized in the VAT law. So we will take what exactly, you know, the tax implication that Piyush will cover later on. But basically, uh, any kind of digitally traded currencies are covered as virtual assets. So digitally means not the fiat currency. When we say fiat currencies, all your dirhams, dollar, these are all your normal fiat currencies. So the cryptocurrencies are basically your virtual assets. So those are def defined in the law, which was not the case earlier. So that's first one. Then they have defined the legal representative. Um, I mean, legal represent representative, we understand very well in the case of a, a, like a minor, you have a guardian or a custodian who handle in the case of a minor. 
But what is important to note here is that there can be some companies which go through a bankruptcy procedure or going through a liquidation procedure. So there is always been a challenge, you know, how to find the legal representative because I handle a lot of liquidations uh, here in UAE. So we have cases where, you know, the liquidation goes on for say five, seven years and the manager is not there anymore in the company. So, and the shareholders are maybe also not available at times. So how to handle that kind of a situation is a challenge. So with the VAT law, they include, you know, for example, when you start a liquidation, you always have a board resolution where you appoint, appoint the liquidator or, or a bankruptcy trustee when you do go through the bankrupt, uh, bankruptcy procedures. So those can actually take over the role of the legal representative. That's an important change, especially a company who wants to close down at a later stage. So this is something which is new added. And then business day, they have clarified further that business days is, is uh, you know, uh, all the days except the weekends and the public holidays. So that's about it. Uh, Ashir, move to the next page, please. Okay, so now there are two new articles that have been added. Um, one is, so they have start, they have named it like article uh, in the brackets BIS. And that's how they have named the new article. So the first article is about exception of supplies. Um, so, you know, uh, before, like, it was not very clear on the government projects, like if there are any transaction between governments on the real estate or the buildings, the VAT apply, and mostly it was applicable. So this, this, uh, this exception basically applies to the government entities. So any kind of transaction between government entities for buildings and those kind of things are going to be uh, considered as an exception uh, to the supply of goods or services. So that's one thing which is added. Secondly, they have added a, uh, another article on the tax deregistration. So this is an important one. Specifically, I'll just look into the practical issue uh, which is happening. Like, you know, there are many companies I have personally noted also, specifically in the de designated zones, um, they registered for the VAT and they have been filing, filing zero, zero, basically VAT return all this while and keeping the certificate active though they are required to deregister, but they have not deregistered it, even if the law requires it. So now this, this article is giving the tax authority an additional power to go and deregister uh, those uh, certificates which, which are there, which are not supposed to be there, mm -hmm. and they have grounds to believe that those certificates should be deregistered. So this is an additional power which has gone to the tax authority to do that. And however, of course, they have to see a genuine reason that to deregister and there are no, no supplies happening. So this is another uh, article which is added into the VAT uh, executive regulations. Next page. Okay, see another uh, few things uh, which has happened. I, uh, I'm, I'm sure you appreciate that the main, uh, main articles in the VAT law are basically supply of goods and services because the VAT actually apply on your goods or the services. So there are some small, small changes which have been added. The one, the, the main points which we are trying to cover here, first is on the supply of goods, on the specifically on the real estate. Before, uh, it was mentioned that supply of real estate includes supply of real estate on lease or sale. So any kind of lease or sale when you're doing that is a supply of goods for real estate purposes. Now, they've, if you see the highlighted part, they've added that any other forms of disposable disposal causing the transfer of ownership thereof from one person to another. So any other form they have included. So what could be cases like that? Like if you think of merger or acquisition where the company get transferred from one, one party to another party, in the VAT log, if it is a going concern, actually the VAT does not apply if the business is sold as a going concern. But with the addition of this article, if there are any real estate sitting inside those company, even though it's a going concern, this is something to look into whether the supply of goods articles is attracted or not. So something new addition which, which is added here because that's not that directly a sale of as real estate or uh, leasing of a real estate, but this is a, any other form of transfer of ownership. So this is something interesting which has been added. Secondly, they have added another thing on the deemed supply. So I'm sure you understand deemed supply is, is those supplies which are basically given goods free of cost without any kind of VAT charge. And there were limits on it that, you know, like before the limit was that if you, had, if you are giving free of cost supplies uh, and the value of those supplies is not 
exceeding 40,000 dirhams value in the entire year, which is roughly around uh, 2,000 dirhams of VAT. So up to 2,000 dirham of VAT, if you're giving free of cost uh, goods, those are come, uh, you know, considered as deemed supply and there is no, no VAT obligation to be considered. However, anything uh, beyond that it becomes a taxable. So if you uh, give uh, free goods more than uh, 40,000 dirhams of value, then actually even it is free of cost, you have to still consider it as a deemed supply for VAT purposes. So that was uh, the case before. The case is still the same. One thing that they have clarified here in the law is that they have mentioned that amount exceeding value of uh, VAT payable of 2000, which is 2000 means the, uh, the, the transaction value can be 40,000, uh, 5% of that comes to 2000. Mm -hmm. So any value exceeding 2000 is, is what you have to pay VAT on. It's not like if the moment you cross 40,000, your entire get uh, taxable. That was a bit of ambiguity there, which is clarified. Secondly, they have added for uh, another amount of 250,000 VAT payable in the case of government entities of charities, which was not the case. So that is an additional item which has been added into the definition of deemed supplies. Next page, please. All right, so voluntary registration criteria. This is also very interesting that, I mean, it's very much the same which is there before. There are certain additions or I would say clarification which has been added in the executive regulations. What it means is that when, when a company applies for a voluntary registration, there are two ways of doing it. One is that your 187, 500 dirhams of revenue threshold and also the expenses threshold. So there can be cases where you only have revenue, where you don't, sorry, you, you only have expenses, you don't have revenue. So going by the expenses model, you can still register uh, for VAT and claim back the expenses which have been paid. Now, what clarification is added here is that any any kind of application when you're doing for voluntary registration, it is very important that you justify to the tax authority that either you are doing taxable supplies or uh, you are in the process of doing it or even if you are like, for example, doing any taxable supply, which are out of scope, for example, if you are doing any kind of taxable supply, which is outside UAE, but they would have been taxable had they been carried out in UAE, then still there is some link between the expense and, and the sales, if you know what I mean. So that is very important. So uh, situations where uh, there are only expenses where, where there is no linked sales or any kind of sales in whether in UAE or outside, uh, those are in a bit of a problem situation. So think about companies who are just into research, like they are only doing research and incurring expenses. They have no revenue in picture or they don't have anything in front of them. For them, maybe they can cross the voluntary expense threshold very easily, but they will not have supply. So they don't have anything in visibility to apply for, uh, you know, to have any kind of taxable supplies, those might not get a registration or might face a difficulty there. That's one thing. Another, any kind of representative companies, basically when they have offices say here, it's more of a representative office, which is managing the relationship of the company uh, with the customer here. But are they really doing any kind of sales? Is those expenses linked anyway with the sales? That is something to look into. So that is a new additional clarification which is added into the voluntary uh, registration criteria. Next page, please. So tax deregistration, uh, this is also, uh, I already spoke a little bit about it. Uh, there is uh, the tax authority now has the power uh, to deregister company if they have uh, reasons to believe that the, the it's, it's not, good to keep the registration activity for those uh, registration active for those companies like i mentioned that many companies just keep that uh, registration certificate because the authority asked or you know the, it is a requirement like you go and register with the government authority they always ask for your trn number so many companies even they're not supposed or they are and no more making those taxable supplies they still keep the trn certificate just because they might be required to uh, you know submit somewhere however uh, due to that, the, the number of zero return filing or non-filing of returns has exceeded too much. So now FTA has the right to deregister those 
like uh, those trn which are which are not supposed to be there that's one thing and secondly even if when uh, uh, tax authorities are communicating with the taxpayers uh, and they are not getting any responses or then they like they don't know what's happening with the company there is no tax filing of return or there is no response happening that th those cases also can be deregistered by the tax authority so it's not about just sending the reminders all the time they can also take the role of uh, you know closing it down so that's one thing another thing which they have added here uh, in the deregistration is that you have a tax group so tax group have a lot of member entities within there so in case any of the member entity within the tax group has stopped making taxable supplies then those member companies can be removed out of the tax group by the tax authority so for example if we, uh, like i said if company is just making only expenses with, the, with the no revenue attached to it and being part of the tax group you actually can use the expenses but that member entity does not actually make any supplies of any sort so they are um, kind of uh, caught up in in this so they can be removed out uh, by the tax authorities so that's there uh, next page all right, I think from here, Piyush will take over. So I'll hand over um, this to Piyush. So Piyush, please, if you can take, a, take it up from here. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Rishi, for mm -hmm. the valuable insights. Uh, so now uh, we are going to cover some further uh, details. Next few slides, we have uh, some uh, new changes which are applicable for most of all the clients, all the taxable persons. So uh, now we are going to cover the zero rating export of goods. So uh, earlier it was mentioned that you need to have a commercial document and com commercial evidence and an official evidence to consider it as an export of goods to considering uh, export of goods as a zero rating supplies. So now they have given three options uh, now. Uh, so you either you can get a custom declaration and commercial evidence as a proof of export or a shipping certificate and official evidence as a proof of export or custom declaration that prove the suspension arrangement that all the custom duties are uh, duties if the goods are put into the custom suspension that is a bonded warehouse uh, which is given by the customs so if you get any combination of these three type of type of uh, combination for the documents you can consider the export of goods or direct export or indirect uh, considered as a zero rated uh, so they have now they changes the change the official evidence uh, definition also now for in the official evidence uh, they have said mentioned that like if any export certificate if you get from the custom authority or any other competent authority in the ua or uh, you can get a export certification or verified it by the competent authority in the destination country which was not there before and the definition of commercial evidence uh, is the same uh, so airway bill sea way bill and land way bill is uh, was already there in the previous uh, executive regulation then they have now mentioned the new term called uh, shipping certificate so shipping certificate means that any uh, attestation or any kind of a certification received from the uh, transport companies or any agent who's doing the transportation if you don't get any uh, commercial evidence you can get a certificate from the agent or a transport companies now the main question arise which everyone is always looking for is uh, said can you go to the next slide please yeah so is the exit certificate is still required uh, so it, yeah so exit certificate which they are saying is like that is the question i always ask by the fta like exit certificate should be there even if you have a commercial or official evidence still the exit certificate is required or not now let's discuss the type of document which we are looking for here. so the official evidence they have given us the three options either you get us export certificate from the custom authority or a export certificate from any other competent authority in ue or export certificate or a clearance certificate from the uh, destination country. So that is all about the official evidence which you are supposed to receive. Uh, and the other documents are commercial evidence or a shipping certificate. They have given us the option either you get a commercial evidence or you get a shipping certificate, which was explained. Now, authority have given the some uh, in uh, some power to themselves. They can deny all the documents submitted to them they have a power to not accept those documents and ask for some other documents so what we have encountered or what we have understand from all the various encounter with the 
authority that they always ask for the exit certificate we have recent recently also they we have seen so many emails from fta and as and when they do the audit or and any bad refund application we submit so they uh, send an query that you need to give us the exit certificate so the still they haven't given any clarity about the exit certificate we would recommend to get all the exit certificates wherever it is possible and keep these kind these official evidence or commercial evidence along or if you are available able to get the exit certificate yeah say so next slide please now they have uh, some amendments which they have done it for export of services so earlier export of services was considered when you are supplying the services or uh, where the recipient is it not in ue and uh, and you and, and the recipient was not in ue at the time of providing the services so now they have elaborated the short term uh, presence in the UAE. So the, before it was not specifically mentioned on 30 days are specifically given that short term presence in UAE can be considered. So if there is uh, a recipient of services who is in UAE uh, for less than 30 days, then it will be considered as it's not they were not in UAE at the time of services. If they were in more than for 30 days, it will not be considered export of services. And services to consider as zero days should not be linked to any real estate uh, located in UAE. Now they have added one more criteria for services which are performed in UAE won't be considered as zero rated if it is linked to the special services uh, place of supply. So those services are if the goods related uh, supply of goods and installation of goods or services, then supply of means of transportation to a non taxable person, any hotel, food, drinking, catering services, any event related services, services related to real estate and transportation services or transportation related services. So if these services are performed in UAE, even though the supply, uh, even though the recipient is outside UAE, it will be still uh, considered as taxable at 5%, not as zero rated. Same goes for the telecommunication and electronic services also. If there is any services which uh, telecommunication or electronic services which are performed in UAE, specifically in UAE or uh, designated zone, in that case, it will not be considered as zero rated, it will be considered as 5% even though uh, the recipient of uh, services are outside you. Yeah, right, next. So now the this uh, is something which is uh, clarified uh, by FTA. Uh, so with this new uh, amendment, it was already uh, defined or uh, we would say like already explained by the other GCC countries. So here what we are seeing is like international transportation of goods. Uh, when it is when when there is an import of goods, it should be uh, and there is a door to door delivery. So and then that is considered as an uh, international transportation of goods. So it should be provided by the same supplier. So that word same supplier was not mentioned earlier. Now it is mentioned in the law in the executive regulation. So that means like if there is a breach or if there is a gap or if it is provided by some uh, other supplier. So let's say if there is a clearance is done by one supplier and uh, transport international transportation is done by one supplier and then the local transportation is done by the other supplier. So in that case, the local leg of transaction also becomes a local supply of goods and it should be taxed at 5%. Not as can, it cannot be considered as uh, international transportation of goods and also now then next point which we have added is like a good supplied for the means of transportation now earlier it was only the local supply of uh, goods for a means of transportation was zero rated but now they have included the import of goods also so here uh, th this we have to see into very carefully now import of goods if it is for the means of transportation is zero rated it won't be uh, it should not be covered under rcm 5% so if and as per the law and as per the general practice in the market rcm in import of goods rcm is always at 5% so it might, we have to look into very much detail for it and do the reconciliation for import of goods when uh, company is involved in uh, goods when they are supplying it for means of transportation now, another one major change which they have mentioned is services provided during the trans international transportation of goods or passenger. So now this should be related to the services which we are providing to the recipient of transportation services, not to the vessel owners or any aircraft owner. So now this might be having very much impact on the all the ship management companies. 
Likewise, like if uh, before, if there is a ship com shipping company was providing the services to a vessel owner, uh, it would have been zero rated by this clause. Now, if it is not, and, and if we consider these services as a normal services and both the supplier and the receiver is within it, it becomes 5%. Earlier, it was zero rated. So now if the services for any management of ship or aircraft or anything for international transportation won't be zero rated for all the transactions. So the services which will be should provided during the during the voyage, it should be uh, to the transportation service uh, receiver, not the vessel owner. Yes, it next slide, please. So the next which we are going to cover is uh, financial services. So financial services, they have added two major parts. One is the investment uh, fund management. So all the companies who are listed are with the competent authority and providing the fund management services. So any fee or anything charged by them for the managing the funds is considered, will be considered as exempt supplies. This will ease down, ease down their compliance requirement as they don't require to raise a tax invoice or any thing and don't, no need to charge VAT on the invoices. However, this change will impact their VAT input claim as against exam supply, they won't be able to claim any VAT input. So that might uh, have some impact on their costing. So now the next part is for virtual asset as uh, Rishi have already mentioned us like virtual asset, all the cryptocurrency or any other, other form of uh, digital representation value that can be traded online. Uh, consider a virtual asset that is and managing those virtual asset or providing any consultancy uh, for the virtual assets will be also part of exam supplies. So that is something new uh, for a new industry and this will be in, uh, have the impact from the Jan 2018 that is specifically mentioned in the executive regulation. So any supply of uh, any sale purchase, uh, any sale of virtual assets will be any uh, profit generated from that will be considered the exam supplies. Yes, it can we go to the next slide, please? So the, this is uh, something uh, very important for all uh, health insurance. So any insurance premium paid for any employees was uh, we were able to claim the input, but for dependents, it was not allowed for all the most of all the Emirates unless until it was a legal obligation. So it was available only in Abu Dhabi. Now they have uniformed it and it was now it is applicable for all the Emirates irrespective there is a legal obligation is there or not. Now any uh, VAT paid for the premium for uh, health insurance provided to its employees, any taxable person can claim the VAT input. That subject to some conditions so that is only for allowed for spouse and three children younger than 18 years. So any one who's getting the paying the medical insurance and VAT input cannot be claimed for uh, children above uh, 18 and the more than three. Now there is uh, same uh, changes are there in the good supply for the healthcare services. Now uh, local supply of goods and service goods for the uh, healthcare sectors like any pharmaceutical products or any medical equipments was zero rated when the, it was a local sale. Now they have covered the import of goods for the of uh, pharmaceutical products or any uh, ec medical equipment is will be also considered zero rated. So now again we have to see uh, RCM aspect of it. Now generally all the import of goods comes as a five percent. Now if the, there is an import of goods for a pharmaceutical products or any medical equipment, it's supposed to be zero rated. So we may have to do some kind of adjustments through box seven or uh, for all the RCM related items. So we have to have a list of documents ready to do the adjustment for this. Yes, it next slide please. Now for the apportionment of input tax, there are not some major changes, but few changes are there. So the first change which they have mentioned is a uh, taxable person uh, can apply for exception for the tax year rent. So now uh, in the law, they have mentioned only the three uh, tax year rent, that is 31st December, 31st January or 30, uh, 28th of Feb. They haven't mentioned any other uh, tax year rent for that matter. So that is basically based on the uh, tax year uh, tax quarters provided by the FTA. Now we can apply for the exception for the tax year. 
that is applicable only when if there is a deregistration application. So if you are going to get deregister, so that will be the last day to consider as a tax year. Or if you're joining a tax group, uh, that will end the, the last day before joining. So if you enter into a tax group, so your existing VAT, uh, VAT TRM will get <clears throat> suspended. So that will be the last day for the uh, tax year. And then there, when if you are leaving the tax group, that will be the last day for becoming a member for that particular tax group. And it becomes the uh, last day for the tax year. Now, FT have given one more uh, approval. So like if we, if a taxable person can request FT for approval for the use of a fixed apportionment rate, which was used for the tax for the previous year. Now, if you look into this, you don't have to do the more of the apportionment calculations where uh, we have to look into the new details. If there is no much changes are there or all the systems and everything is same, then you can apply for the same uh, fixed apportionment rate to FTA. If once it is approved, you can use the same rate to do the calculation for the input tax apportionment in the current period as of uh, previous year. Now, if you apply for any uh, change or any tax year, which is less than if, you, if a company is formed in between, so you can apply for the change uh, of tax year and it will be the shorted, uh, sh short tax year. When you do that, once on the approval, you have to do, make the adjustment for amounts also proportionately. Yes, now, this is something is coming up for all the uh, capital asset scheme adjustment. Now, we have seen many clients and we have seen uh, many qu uh, queries we receive based on the IFRS and everything, like when we have to capitalize and when we have to start the capital asset scheme. So when there is a uh, internal developed capital asset, any building or any plant and machinery, so the FT have now clarified that uh, capital as a scheme adjustment. So where the register which we have to prepare is to be prepared from the date when you are going to use it for the first time. So the, when the asset is started to be used, then only you have to start applying for the capital as a scheme adjustments, not before that. So if, if, let's say if, if, if there is a construction, a construction of building, which is taking two to three years, you can claim the input. That input can be claimed as and when you are expanding it. But the capital as a scheme will be applicable from when you are going to use that building, not from the start of the project, but after once you start using the building. That's it. Next slide, please. Now there are some major changes are uh, there for the tax invoice regulations. So first, uh, we all know like we have an option to issue tax simplified tax invoice. That is when you are raising an invoice to a non VAT register person or the value, if even if you're selling it to a VAT register, but the value is below 10,000. So then if these two conditions are satisfied, you can raise a tax simplified tax invoice. Now FTA have given the some changes or some requirements related to simplified tax invoice. One of that requirement is you have to raise the tax invoice within the same day. So if the date of supply is triggered and you are raising a simplified tax invoice, it needs to be issued within the same day. And by meaning of raising is always meaning both, like you have to raise the invoice and deliver the invoice. So if you are raising an invoice for the simplified tax invoice, you have to raise within the same day. Also, FT have clarified that for the RCM transaction, let's say for any uh, gold and diamond for B2B transaction or any electronic devices selling for further sale for B2B transaction. In that case, you have to, you cannot uh, raise a simplified tax invoice. You have to raise a detailed tax invoice. So FTA have clarified that you cannot raise a uh, simplified tax invoice in the case of RCM transactions. Now, uh, authority have given one more power to themselves that they may issue some cases where uh, they can, even if the two conditions, which I explained just now, that 10,000 and the to a non-registered uh, customer. So in that case, also even these two conditions are satisfied, still uh, they cannot raise a simplified tax invoice. So that will be on the discretion from the FTA. Uh, if they have any cases which is required not to raise a simplified tax invoice, that will be informed by the authority. Then they have now uh, for the, when agent are raising the tax invoices, so as we all know, agent can raise the tax invoice on behalf of the principal. Earlier, it was just mentioned that they have to make sure that principal is not raising a tax invoice. Now they have further clarified that 
when agent is raising a tax invoice they should uh, also subject to that agent have sufficient have retained the sufficient recourse to determine the name address tax registration number of the principal supplier at the same time principal supplier also have to get the details of the agent if and we have seen many cases where uh, suppliers principal suppliers uh, not getting any documents from the agent about the invoices raised so now the ft have clarified specifically that for when the agent is raising an invoice on behalf of the principal in that case they both have to get all the details for agent uh, from uh, agent to supply uh, principal supplier and principal supplier to agent so they have to share the their details to them now the big relief for all the banks and the companies who are having a multiple supplies and there is only one invoice for the multi supply earlier it is mentioned that for all the summary tax invoice there need not to be raise any tax invoice for multiple times they can raise for all one one invoice for the multiple supplies within a month earlier it was mentioned within a month now they have given a relief that they can raise within 14 days from the calendar month so for all the bank charges or for any ethno bills or any uh, multiple delivery kind of uh, uh, goods where uh, summary tax was invoice was supposed to be raised within a month now they have a relief to get it uh, raised within 14 days from the end of the each month now uh, this is something uh, relevant for the tax invoice uh, tax credit note earlier it was mentioned it was not specifically mentioned that uh, tax credit note can be raised for mul uh, multiple tax credit note can be raised for one tax invoice so now when i say uh, you can we can raise one uh, multiple credit note uh, for one tax invoice we have to look into that which value have to be considered for the second credit note let's say if you have a tax invoice for 10000 we have given a discount for one company to one company Uh, and we raise a tax credit note now the we will when mention the original tax invoice reference we will give the reason for it and we will give the difference of value so now uh, 500 is already uh, gone and so the net value became 9500 now we have given another cash discount or any other kind of subsidies to the taxable person uh, recipient so in this case we have to use the value of 9500 not the 10000 so they have clarified that if there are multiple credit notes for one tax invoice you have to use the value of the adjusted value not the original tax invoice so the in the second second credit note it needs to be something uh, which is already adjusted not the original value and they have clarified same as for the tax invoice uh, agent can uh, raise the tax credit note also on behalf of uh principal supplier in that case also they have to keep all, all the documents ready as i have mentioned in the tax invoice also uh that's it uh, uh from my side thank you piyush so, thank you rishi sir well uh, that comes to an end to our webinar we hope uh, today's session it was very informative no, and i should one was, second we have some questions so, uh, which needs to be covered so let's uh, take up the questions uh, so okay. the first the first question is uh, transferring commercial property to a director who is a natural person without any monetary consideration is it subject to vat piyush what's up what are your yes, thoughts uh, yes it will be subject to vat even though it is not a, there is no consideration but it will be uh, kind of another disposable where the it is Uh, the ownership will transfer from one person to another from one company to the director uh, if there is a transfer that is was was the reason for implementing that because it, if it is without the consideration still we have to consider in the deemed supply provision but still it will become taxable yeah it will come tax taxable another in, uh, angle to it is in the corporate tax also uh, it becomes a transfer pricing issue so you have to look at both the taxes together and vat anyway you have deemed supply related also uh, though it's not a regular supply of goods but uh, but still any supply like even if you sell scrap it is actually a supply so you have to look at uh, from that perspective next question is from suraj he is asking supply of service in relation to goods that are exported previously are considered as 0% the supply of service in relation to goods that are exported previously so so we have to look in look into the what kind of services we are talking about 
Now, if there is a services for installation, if the goods are already exported and the this is related to the installation, so inst and it is specifically mentioned the place of provision, place of supply for the installation will be the where the goods are uh, installed. So place of supply will be outside UAE. So it will automatically becomes out of scope supply. But yeah, if you can uh, describe us what kind of uh, services you are talking about, then we can give the more clarity on this. Right. I think Suraj, this need more discussion. So maybe you, we can take it up on one to one basis. Basically, we have to understand which particular type of item we're looking at because there are special rules and there are general rules on place of supply. So we have to, we have to give to you, you the correct answer, then a general answer. So the next question is from Kapil uh, Mathur. He's he's asking how is the treatment of team and insurance? So is the VAT on that claimable? See. Uh... Uh, when it, when we talk about the key man insurance, if it is uh, required for the business purpose and it is uh, essential for that employee to do the its job, it, see in the law it is mentioned like any expenses which you are incurring on behalf of an employee. In that case, it needs to be an integral part for them to do the business uh, to the to perform their uh, employee employee activity. So if it is not that way, then we cannot consider the input. If it is in something like we have to give the insurance and it is oblig there is an obligation or any, it is a key part for them to have that insurance, then only we can claim the input. Yeah, so so basically key man insurance, uh, you know, it is more like a replacement cost. So for example, if the, the managing director of the company, uh, there is a key man insurance done. So basically in case, he is not able to participate, then the insurance company can cover it. So, though it is not directly linked, but it's more of an insurance. So, this is how the idea is. What do you think about it? Yes, I think so. If it is part of something which is related to be a business and we cannot be run without that, then only we can claim. Otherwise, it's on our personal nature then we cannot. But I believe uh, key man insurance is something which is important and for the business purpose it is, then yes, we can claim. And also, uh, Kapil, one more thing you have to also look at is like, for example, many companies when they are raising the bank facilities or things like that, this is becomes a mandatory requirement from the bank that without a key man, in man insurance, they will not gonna allocate you any funds. So again, this something needs to be dwelled on a case-to-case -case basis. How, how does it really connects with the business and not not just a general insurance car taken uh, uh, for other reasons so so this is something we need to look at the case by case basis but if there is a genuine business case and without that it cannot ha happen then it is a claimable expense that's a claimable vat that how how we feel uh, okay so the next question um, is now can we claim input vat for dependents medical insurance premium from which date is it applicable? I think you covered yeah. that one. Can you say yes, again? We, we, yes, we can claim uh, for the dependence medical subject to the conditions that it for uh, only for three kids uh, up to the age of 18 and uh, for the spouse, we can claim. And effective date will be from uh, 15th of November. Okay. So any uh, what about any medical insurance uh, for... Uh, before 15 November, what happens to that? Period? Well, we have, let's like, say, we have received the medical insurance invoice in April 24, and then we that will cover for one year. So we have to do the proportionate for that. Okay. And now, for example, if there are some claims for last year, if somebody wants to do a say a voluntary, uh, what you call voluntary adjustment of the VAT return for previous years, can they do it or no? Or no, because uh, because the or... underlying executive regulation is applicable from the 15th of November and they haven't given the exception to it. Okay, so it's not retrospectively, it's prospectively. No. Yes, yes. Okay, so the next question is from Himal. Uh, he's saying tax date date of tax invoice should be same as date of supply. Can we take the input? But so his call, call, question is also if supply includes goods plus transport services from free zone to mainland. Is there a need to segregate the component even if major 90 to 95 percent of supply value is pertaining to goods? Just can you read out the question? Yeah. I think it's a little longer. Yeah. So maybe if you read, you will get it easier. Yeah. Also, if the supply includes goods plus transportation services from free zone to mainland, is there a need to segregate the component if the major 90 to 95 percent of 
See, uh, whenever you talk about any supplies between uh, free zone to mainland, what we have to look into is all the services which is which are in UAE, uh, even if it is from designated zone to mainland or mainland to designated zone is taxable at 5%. And the goods part can be considered as an in, uh, for under RCM. So if there is a segregation and, and as per the general rule for the comp single composite supply and multiple supplies, if it is identifiable for the goods or services, so then we have to look into that. And we have to segregate even if it is five percent. And that and there is one more I think question. Date of supply should be same as date of uh, date of should be same as date of supply. We can take the input VAT credit. See, VAT credit is not linked as specifically when the invoice is issued. VAT input credit is based when you are receiving the invoice from the vendor and when there is an intention to make the payment is formed. Till that time, these two conditions are certified. We cannot claim the VAT input, and only in that period we can claim the input. Right. Okay. So next question is from Rahul. His question is: Being a travel agent, if we make a tour service for client for future date, example, the service will be provided after two months. Do we have to raise invoice on the date of service or at the time of sale is closed? See, uh, in this case, as we have to look into the date of supply provisions. In case if it is a service which are already agreed or invoice is already raised or the payment is received, whichever is early is considered as a date of supply. So now if there is a two services, you agree with your client and you have already raised the invoice. So the date of supply is triggered in the same day. Or if you have received the amount from the client, so that also becomes a date of supply. Or if you have not you haven't raised the invoice and you are providing the services after two months and you have received the payments, it may be delayed after the two months. So we have to look into the place uh, data supply provision for it. It will be the earlier of these three. Correct. Yeah. And also, Rahul, you have to see this is, uh, you know, what you are doing. Is it part of international transportation or local sales? So if you're international transportation, you might avoid pay charging any VAT, whether now or later. But in the case of VAT, the rule has not changed, which was there before the earliest of the three. So I think that uh, that should clarify your question. Now, the, the other one, Div, Divyana Lakotia has asked, regarding creation mm. of internal asset, work starts from 1st of October 24, but asset is com completed on 1st of December 25. Can we claim input from 1st October to December 25? Yes, uh, Divyansh, we can claim the VAT input. So, as I mentioned before also, for capital, the date of use is only for the capital asset scheme adjustment. That is like if you have if you are using the capital asset for the personal use, you have to re reverse the VAT input in that case. Uh, but it is not linked with the VAT claiming of the VAT input during when we are constructing any asset. So let's say if there is a construction is going on uh, in as you have mentioned in October 24 and it is getting completed in December 25, you, over the period, you can claim the VAT input. So once you accumulate those input, you, that capital asset scheme will start. In that, you have to see uh, if you are going to use it for some uh, personal purpose or anything which is not for related to the business purpose. Then you, based on what you have claimed or accumulated, you may have to do the some adjustments. So those adjustments will start uh, when you put to use the asset. Okay, so next question is the I think follow up question from Kapil. He's saying that that key man is necessary for business succession planning, especially for shareholder protection for multiple partners. So uh, Kapil, what I personally think in this is that succession planning is is part of your you know structuring of the business uh, in terms of succession. But the question here is like if you for example remove that key man insurance from the picture for now, can the business run without it? That is the biggest uh, point to think about. Uh, so if, like for example, if you remove Keyman insurance and tomorrow banks say, I will not give you facility, you don't have cash flow, you cannot run the business, the company closes down. That is a thing which is linked with the business. But if something is done from a succession planning, which you take it or not take it, does not really affect the business. So this is something becomes different. That's what we have to look at it. So Piyush, you want to add something to it? No, no, it's very clear. Uh, thank you. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah, so next... anything further, we can always talk about it. But this is how, what, this is what the law wants to do. Basically, that's the objective of the law. So we have to uh, follow in that line of thinking. So have to, you have to structure it in such a way that it doesn't look like uh, something which is done out of choice. 
it should it should come out as a need of the business that's very important then next question is from rashid dalla yes please saying something yeah so no 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 okay yeah, yeah. So, Next question is from Rashid Alam. He's saying if an event management company is registered in UAE and provide their service to another UAE registered company, but the actual place of supply of services outside, is transaction covered under zero rate or under standard rate? So, so, so uh, Rashid, uh, first of all, uh, how VAT works is first of all, we have to see if you are supplying the goods or services or not. And then place of supplies in UAE or not. If the place of supplies in UAE, then only the UAE VAT law will applicate. So as mentioned in the low place of supply provision, for any place of supply for event management or any if, if there is a company who is uh, arranging an event and doing conducting an event outside UAE, so place of supply becomes became outside UAE. But now, as you have mentioned in that event management, if they are just uh, organizing or just doing the follow-ups or any sort of that sense, and it becomes a normal services, then it should be standard rated. Otherwise, uh, it becomes out of scope. So there will be no cases of zero rating any uh, event management service. Either it will become out of scope, making a place of supply outside UAE. So if, let's say if the event is happening in KSA and it is done by one UAE company, and in uh, it is done for another UAE company. So it becomes auto scope sale between even if it is between two UAE companies because the place of supply is outside UAE. And if there's just a event arranging services, then you are not conducting an event, but just arranging the event. In that case, it's a normal services. And if the and place of supply becomes in UAE and the receiver also is in UAE, it becomes a local transaction. And you need to charge VAT for that. Right. I think very clear. It's a special, special case uh, wherein you know where the event takes place. That is where the place of supply is. The next question is from Fazan Khan. He's saying for zero rated export, if we have invoice, exit certificate, custom declaration, bill of lading, and consignment note, is that enough supportings? Yes, uh, as it is having all the official and commercial evidence for to prove that export of goods. Yes, this is our uh, documents enough you know, for proving the export of goods and to consider it as zero rated. How about, uh, you know, uh, Piyush, the reconciliation between the custom document, uh, uh, the value in the custom document and the value in your invoices, if there are any inconsistencies, uh, what is your thoughts about that? Because that also yeah, is so, a so very good question, Rishi. See, now let's say if a company is raising an invoice and declaring, uh, so raising an invoice for 100,000 and in the customs they have agreed or there were some changes and they were able to only get the documents or it was by mistake it was mentioned 90,000 uh, value. So the as per authority you have can consider zero rated only for 90,000 for balance 10,000 it will be considered as a local sale and 5% will be applicable on that. So we have to be very sure about when you are giving any document to authority and when you are preparing any document because the custom declaration in that value is given by the uh, supplier, not by the custom authority. So if you are adding the value 100,000 or you may have to make the changes in the exit certificate and all the custom declaration and everything. Hmm. Very interesting. I think that is an important one. Okay, the next question is from Imtiaz. He's asking to obtain the exit certificate. Is there any portal or do we have to request specifically while exporting for the requirement of exit certificate? What if previously See, uh, not obtained? Imtiaz, Imtiaz is a very good question and we have getting queries about this because FTA is coming for audit and they are asking for exit certificate even for those periods when the custom authority themselves were not raising or issuing the exit certificate. So we have seen these kind of cases very regularly. But yes, we can. There is no online portal as such for existing for new uh, shipments. You can apply for the exit certificate, and you can get a. And each Emirate have their own portals, so you can go there and you can apply for exit certificate, and they will provide. You will have to uh, give the all the necessary documents required for it. For but that this is applicable only for the current periods. For all the previous periods for from uh, 2018 till now, you have to go physically. Uh, to custom authority and to discuss with them and they may ask for the further details and proof of export then only they will uh, issue exit certificates. Right. 
so, so next this is something next. so this is something which is very crucial and it is asked by fta on each occasion whenever it is a vat refund or vat audit or anything exit certificates being a very crucial document and then authorities uh, custom authority have also understood that and we are able to get the exit certificate for the previous periods yeah, even I have noted that the refunds get rejected because there is no exit certificate attached, even though rest of things are there. So something to pay attention to for definitely. The next question is from George. He's asking for zero VAT purpose for storage of liquids in free zones and sold to outside customers. Whether storage charges to the customer is standard rated and the goods which is petroleum is zero rated. See, uh, it is something uh, we have to look into very detail for storage charges because they have uh, FT, like it is not something uh, defined in the law, but they have given the clarity through their one of the guide and public clarification where they have mentioned that if the storage charges are part of a, a combined uh, warehouse or, or any combined space or if it is defined that this space is linked to that charges. So it becomes a supply of real estate in a designated zone and it's the auto scope supply. But if it is not a defined area, it is based on the num uh, quantity of the product. So it may change or it is it will be charged as and when there is a uh, you are using that area. So it becomes a storage charges. So in that case, it becomes uh, zero rated supplies or 5% as the case may be. So for the storage charges, we have to look into the agreement which you have with the customer. So if it is based on the if it is covered under the real estate, then it becomes auto scope. If it is not covered under real estate, it becomes out uh, five percent of zero rated as the case may be. Right. Okay. Thank you. Then Imad has a question: If a company supplies some items every day to another company without raising any sale tax invoice, uh, as per the new rules, they have to raise full sales invoice for all the items which have been delivered after fourteen days. And it was so he wants a little bit clarification like so you know, uh, it, so right? Imar, the the clarification which have authority provided is earlier within a month if there are multiple deliveries to one customer you were supposed to raise for all the multiple deliveries one tax in summary tax invoice at the end of the month so let's say if you are start giving 15 or 20 of delivery every day there is a delivery and then from first of October to till 31st October whatever the deliveries are there you have to raise invoice as on 31st of October. So there was no uh, relief. So now from 1st October to 31st October, whatever the deliveries are there, you can raise the invoice uh, before 14th of November. Yeah, so basically, basically within 14 days from end of the month. Uh, from so the end of the end of month, yes. Yeah, so it really reduces a lot of efforts in, you know, keep raising invoice and tracking it. So that's good. Yes. Now, the next question is from Joseph. He's asking for shipping companies since normally no VAT is paid and mainly refund is claimed, what will be the authorities view with regard to deregistration? See, uh, specifically for shipping companies, most of the transactions are zero rated. So authority have never mentioned that like if it is uh, uh, zero rated or any supplies which are which would have been taxable if would have been provided in UAE, that also they have covered. So if you are claiming only the input, that is not the only criteria to get the deregistration. You have sales which is not taxable at 5% or you have an autoscope sale which would have been 5% uh, or zero rated in UAE if it is provided within the state. Yeah, so, so Joseph, basically the idea is that there should be some tax, some sort of supplies, whether taxable in UAE uh, or not is another matter. Basically, if there are out of scope supply, those are still supplies, though it's not taxable supply for UA perspective. So that as long as that linkage can be established, it can still be a claimable one. But if there is no supply, you're just sitting on the expenses and claiming VAT, that is something a problem area. That's what they're trying to achieve in the executive regulations. The, the next one is from Dhawal. His question is free sample. If free samples are provided, while exporting goods and exit certificate was obtained in due course. However, the certificate and custom declaration did not mention the free sample provided to the customer as mentioned in the commercial inverse. Does the free sample become a standard supplier zero rated? See, free samples, uh, as I mentioned, and Rishi also mentioned for the deemed supplies, they have never uh, differentiated between local sales or export sales. 
So if your free samples are crossing 40,000, then you have to pay VAT irrespective of the uh, location where you are supplying the free samples. So instead of uh, checking for the customs uh, documents and declaration, first of all, I would like to mention also one more thing. Uh, even if it is free samples, custom will take some values. So whatever the value is given for the samples, unless until it is disclosed for the free samples we need, we need to disclose and map to mention the customs value it is agreed even if in your invoice it might be zero and 100 at 100 percent discount but the customs will consider some value which is as per the hs code for uh, and uh, from the vat from the sales point of view if the samples are there in this case uh, you have to look into the team supply for paying the vat so yeah, deem supply has to be looked at. So anything not on the exit certificate is something you have to think about it. I think uh, the double the best would be to just pick up the case and uh, and talk to Piyush, and he might be able to give his thoughts because these kind of cases is de dealing on a regular basis. Uh, so so Martin has a question. Uh, Mal Malin, I think Malin has a question. If we have imported goods and the clearing by shipping agent which is a taxable registered company in UAE, raise an air freight charges invoice or not. Is it VAT applicable on that? So basic question, See, if we imported goods and we even imported goods, the clearing by shipping agent has uh, uh, basically raised the air freight charge on them. Is it VAT applicable? Yeah, so so uh, Jila, we, what we have looked, we, we have to look into it when you import a goods. And if it, and we have to see if it is FOB basis or CI basis. If it is CI basis, all the freight and freight and insurance, everything is sorry. Uh, so all the freight and insurance and uh, is already included in CI balance. But if it is FOB basis, and you receive a freight and freight uh, invoice from uh, company, if we, if it is local or uh, outside, we have to consider as a part of uh import of goods so you'll do the adjustment in import of goods uh, rather than considering as a separate transaction for uh import of services all right i think uh, that comes to our end of session we are we are at 4 4 pm and 4 minutes just about 4 minutes uh, uh uh, more than one the hour. So with that, we come to close out the session. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach uh, reach out directly to us and happy to help. Thank you very much and have a uh, good evening and have a nice weekend. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.